Hi, welcome to Kitchen Chemistry with Essential Wholesale and Labs. I'm Tinika, and today I'll be showing you how to work with colorants and pigments. Uh, so to get started, you'll need, of course, um, your colorant or pigment. Today I chose ultramarine blue. Uh, you'll need um, either propylene glycol or propendyl. I chose to use propendyl today because it's a um, biodegradable, biodegradable alternative to propylene glycol. So um, let's get started. Oh, you'll also need a mortar and pestle. This is an important uh, tool to have. I recommend porcelain as glass can sometimes chip and you certainly don't want to be grinding glass into your product. So, so let's get started. I'm just gonna add a little bit of color to my mortar. And just enough of the propendial to um, make the color into a paste. So I don't want it too runny, but I, don't, I definitely want to make a paste out of it. And the reason is that this helps uh, disperse the color in your product more evenly um, and helps keep it from settling to the bottom of your product. So once you add that to your mortar and pestle, you just want to really grind those two together. And it kind of looks like so. And even though it looks like, oh, it's already dissolved in there, it may not be. So you really want to just spend some time like really working it in there so you don't have any gritty particles or any, um, any unexpected results. So once I think that it's all dissolved. What I like to do is kind of use my use my pestle as a as a way to judge if there's any gritty bits and it kind of looks like there still are. So I'm going to keep working. And if you find that your paste is uh is too thick, feel free to add more propendial. A lot a little goes a long way, so you really don't need much to um, to turn your color into a paste. Okay, so that looks nice and smooth. I don't see any little gritty bits of powder. Now, if I want to change the um, the tone of the color, so it's pretty pretty rich blue, and if I'm putting it into a clear product, that may not be the color that I want. So you can always use titanium oxide to adjust, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in. And actually, I'm going to use my my handy little powder tool. So I really don't want too much. And if you're doing this to make a product that you want to reproduce or sell, you of course would want to measure out everything that you're using and take good notes so that you can recreate it. But since I'm just showing you how to use it, I'm not doing that today. Okay, so once we get the titanium dioxide in there, we just really want to mix that in and you can see that that little bit really brightened up that color and uh, made it less of a less of a deep blue and more of an ocean blue. And again, you really want to make sure that you work that in and thoroughly mix it um, so that you don't have some unexpected uh, bit of titanium dioxide in your product where color is not even. Okay. Okay. And that looks like a pretty nice blue color. So once you have your color made, I'm just going to put this to the side. Once you have your color made, you can go ahead and add it to your product. So I've, I grabbed some hair gel just to, to play around because I thought it might be fun to have some blue hair gel. And I'll grab a little spoon and see if I can add it in pretty easily. I think I can. So if I add, and of course, like I said, if you want to recreate this, you want to keep notes, but I'm not doing that today because I just kind of want to show you how it turns out. So, so because we've, we've worked so hard to um, make sure that that color was evenly dispersed into the propendial, once it hits the gel, it really looks lovely. It's a really beautiful, rich blue. So the fun thing about this gel, we actually did um, an experiment with it. 
because I thought, oh, you know, it might be fun to have blue hair. I wonder if it'll work in my black hair, and it doesn't, unfortunately. And then I uh, asked one of my coworkers with blonde hair if she would let me put it in her hair, and she was gracious enough to allow it, um, and it didn't color her hair either. So you, it may be that I didn't use enough color, or um, it just doesn't work that way, but um, in our experiment, we just did not see any change of hair color, but it is kind of a cool gel. Okay, so let's put that aside. My next experiment, I used our melt and pour hair wax, and I tried, I tried a couple of things. I thought, you know, why not just add the color directly to the melt and pour hair wax? It should work, right? Well, kind of. So you may, you may be able to see that even though I mixed the color in really thoroughly, it's all settled to the bottom. As the wax hardened again, all my color's at the bottom. So I did it again with um, mixing it with the propendiol first, and you can see, other than, other than the part that went up around the rim, because I wasn't very careful when I was pouring, you can see the color's pretty evenly dispersed throughout the melt and pour hair wax. So it really does make a difference to use the, the propendiol. Um, so let's add a little color to a lotion and see how that looks. Let's see if I can add, see how much I can get out of here. Okay, there we go, so that's just, I mean, maybe, maybe a quarter teaspoon to a cup of lotion. And you can see that that color goes a long way. And I'm not sure why you would want blue lotion, but it sure is fun. Okay, so there you have your blue lotion, in case you want it. So, um, we get a lot of questions about cleanup, and does this stain, does it... Um, am I going to have blue skin if I put this on my face, if I use it as face paint? And I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to stick my finger right into the blue and smear it on my skin directly so I haven't even diluted it with any product. And that is a rich blue. Actually, you could probably use that as, as a face paint directly. Um, so, now I'm all blue. Now what? I'm just going to take some Meissler water which this is a great way to clean this off your face. Meissler water is of course a um, no rinse cleanser. So you can put it onto a cotton pad, uh, clean off your face and you don't have to rinse after that. So if you don't have access to water, you're still okay to use this. So I'm just going to see if I can wash this right off my skin. As you can see, it's coming off pretty good, but I'll dry my hand so that you can uh, determine if it's still blue or not. Be a little scrubbing. Um, I've used this many times as face paint and never had a problem with uh, washing it off. It actually comes off pretty easily. I'm just gonna grab a paper towel. and dry off. And I suppose there's a little staining in my nail bed, but I imagine if I actually wash my hands, it would come right off. But, as you can see, I don't have blue hands. And I've noticed this with all of our colorants, including colorants and pigments, including the oxide colorants. So, the oxide colorants and pigments. So, um, anyways, we hope you enjoyed this video about how to uh, work with and use colorants, and we hope we gave you some good ideas and uh, get out there and create. Thanks for watching.